Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 34. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the North American Elite Open. We're going to be taking the Ford GT for this one. And it's only level 587, uh, even though I auto upgraded, but oh well. Uh, starting off with Sunset Peninsula, then Iberian Circuit, then Magello. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Ford GT. Woohoo! Not bad. This thing feels really solid around these corners. That Corvette is much quicker than us on... Um, once we get to the higher end gears. Ah, oh, this music is so good. Good to be back on to some uh, shorter events, that's for sure. Far away from the memories of the people who carry Father God. I love this song. It's amazing. Good start so far. Oh, let's go back into fourth. I still can't believe fourth gear can get you up to 160 miles an hour in this car. That seems just stupid. Not bad. bad we got six grand for that oh we're gonna get a new car yes so we got a maserati number 15 jmb racing mc12 Ooh. okay i like that let's have a look at the maserati shall we and also have a drink oh it's the red bull one that is very nice, actually. I like that. All right, here we go. Oh, Ford GT rims look awesome on this car. Do you know one thing I would like? Um, 
I know it would look funky for some rims like these Ford GTs because, you know, it's branded Ford GT. But if there was a way that you could get, like, stock rims that are on some of these cars and put them on other cars in the next Forza game. That'd be awesome. And if they had it like a debadged option as well where you could get rid of the badges, and yeah, that'd be a great thing. I don't know how much the car manufacturers would like it though. But uh, us as uh, car fans would love it. bad. So uh, apparently there's been huge advancements with the uh, Xenia emulator uh, when it comes to emulating Xbox 360 games. I think it's Xenia that's called. But uh, apparently it's now pretty much possible to run it on a Steam Deck with minimal issues. Um, and people are even seeing stuff like Red Dead Redemption. The original one running at 30 frames a second, solid 30 FPS on, uh, what's it called? A Steam Deck, which basically means the Steam Deck is running at the same power as an Xbox 360 when it comes to emulation, which is awesome. I'm just hoping that there can be some form of advancement when it comes to emulating Motorsport 3 and 4. Uh, I think... I'm not sure if 3 has problems. I haven't researched it, but I know 4 is pretty much unplayable. Unless you don't mind having missing textures and buggy cars and all that stuff. In which case, it's a perfect game for you. But yeah, it's pretty much unplayable at the moment. Uh, Motorsport 4 on Xenia emulators. It would be cool to see it working soon though. I can't believe we're over halfway through this event already. Like, that's how much shorter these ones have been. So we now got a 30% discount on valves and displacement upgrades by Ford. Here we go. Wait and bleed by Slipknot. This is a tube. Now, I'm hoping that on the off chance that we might actually get a high enough level in the next 13, 14 events. Hoping that we can get enough XP to level up high enough to get a free R1 car. Because I assume level 45 is where we'll get that R1 car. Maybe 46. Probably 46. Chances of us leveling up to level 46 is slim. But not zero. So uh, if we get to level 46, hopefully soon we'll be able to actually drive an R1 car. Uh, because obviously we have the prototype event. Which is sort of why we had to do half of these events and then go, hmm, hang on. Let's go to the manufacturer stuff, get that completed, and then come back to this. Because now we've got enough money that we can actually buy an R1 car. Granted, I do have to sell a couple of vehicles. Um, I think I'll be selling the Porsche Carrera. Get myself a little bit of cash that way. But I'm going to go as far as I can because I don't... Once I get that R1 car, I'm basically set for the rest of the game. Which is awesome. I've been infected with restless whispers and cheat. Oh, it's not that song, is it? 
What is this? Ah, sub focus. I got a load of sub focus shit on this. Oh, my love. Automatic. I can't believe that's the end of the race. These races seem so short. I'm so used to taking like five, six min, five, approximately five minutes. So when a race takes three minutes, I'm like, what? That's not normal. Yeah, we're not getting up to level 46 in time. I don't think we'll get there at all. My love. And there we go. We got a little boost in credit. All right, so we're here for the Coupe Road Test 2. Uh, second one now. Road Atlanta, Sakuba, and then Maple Valley Raceway. Let's get going. All right, here we go. The Jag is on the road. Oh, what nice sounding engine. Very nice. Quite a deep, throaty sound to this. That was amazing. Oh yeah, so uh, earlier on, amazing. Earlier on, I uh, was playing F122 in VR, and I kid you not, that is so much fun. There are obviously some little VR bugs, and anyone who's like a VR connoisseur, cheers, speaker. I'm not going to charge you now. Anyone who's a virtual reality connoisseur will just complain about it. Um, me, I don't really care. As long as I have fun. And uh, when it comes to F122, that's one of the most fun experiences I've had. Being able to immerse myself in a motorsport like that, that's that quick, is awesome. I'm still waiting for the day when, um, uh, what is it? Forza Motorsport supports VR on PC. I would love for the next Forza Motorsport to support VR. Even if it's PC exclusive, I don't care. Because that will get sales. Because uh, Forza has some of the most beautiful interiors. Out of any video game. They're just really high quality. Even like when you look at this, the quality of the interiors in this game are much, much higher than your average interiors. Like this would pass as a VR ready interior. So. Would be cool for uh, Motorsport to get VR.
Meow. We got six grand there. I'll take it. We got a 10% discount on driveline upgrades by Jankuar. Ooh, fancy. Right, here we go. Alright, not bad. Go, go, go. This thing is really nice to drive. I think we're going to get a fun thumbnail of the uh, Jaguar. Nice, good first lap so far. Come on! I think like 95% of the music I listen to um, is either... Well, no. Probably like 98% of it is either American or British. Out of the stuff that I like listening to, uh, and probably the stuff on this playlist. I think a good 70% of it is all um, British music. Biffy Clyro is all British. The Bullet for My Valentine stuff is all British. Slipknot's American, so... Uh, Disturbed, I got no clue who they are. Whether they're American or British. Pretty much every single drum and bass song that's ever existed is British. No other country really makes drum and bass like... British drum and bass, so why well, don't listen to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a very large majority is British. Uh, so we got ten percent discount on front anti roll bars and rear anti roll bars. Let's go. All right, here we go. Castro oil. What are these rings? What's that logo on it? It's not a Jaguar logo, so a good bit of rear wheel spin. Ah, uh, show me love. This is a good tune. Do 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 do. Only five laps for this one, which is uh, surprising. It's a little more than I was expecting. I thought four laps. No, it probably will only take three minutes for us to do this anyways.
I have to go and um, publish some of my previous Twitch streams because some of them just I haven't done. I haven't put them up. So baby, if you want me. Words are so easy to say. Ah, you got to show me love. Camera flicker. Hang on, so if this song is classed as a 90s dance hit... How fucking old is this song, then? Oh my god, music from the 90s is gonna be... Th oh my god. The realisation that I'm getting old. Oh, I don't like it. Saving Ghost. Ooh, spooky. Uh, we got six grand. Not bad. I will take that. And we also got 6,900 credits. <laughs> Very nice. Nice number. All right, so we're here for the Ultralight Showdown now. Uh, this is three races. Starting off with Iberian International Circuit, Maple Valley Raceway, and then Ladera Test Track. Let's get going. All right, here we go. And we're off. Yo, when you upgrade this Foxel, it, it, it does pull. To think we're kind of gone from that era of having a really lightweight car and giving it a small amount of power and it just going we're in that era where a lot of cars are getting extremely heavy and car makers are just saying ah yeah let's add more power like I can guarantee you a lot of our economy emission standards whatever could be quite easily hit nowadays if we just had a smaller less horsepower engine with a lot less technology in it. We don't need all the tech that we get in engines. Granted, we shouldn't go down the Vauxhall road where they put in like a 112 horsepower engine in a car. We should have at least 200 horsepower, which is enough to give you the pulling power that you need. But make the cars lighter. Like, we're seeing BMWs with, like, 650, 700 horsepower for a car that weighs over two tons. That seems a bit ridiculous. Like, half the weight, half the power, you've got just as fun of a car. Not rocket science.
Ah, look. Our new car is... 20 horsepower more powerful than our last one. But it's also 200 kilos heavier, so it's technically less powerful. You know. That's like what modern day cars are. But they'll use that additional power as a selling point. It's like, oh, we put 20 extra horsepower in this car to make it more sporty. No, they added 20 extra horsepower because the car was so much fucking heavier. Just how cars are nowadays. I really wish we could step away from that, like, mentality, though. Car designers, change your ways, you plebs. Come on, let's go. Nice. 5,500 credits. Woohoo! Alright, here we go. Not bad. Banam, 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 banam. Release. Wake in the memory. Nice slide. For the end We go. It is strange driving this car again. Hey, no worries, Alex. I'll have a look in a minute. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day. Go, go, go. Nice. Four. Right, one more lap to go. Then I can have a look at this. Crap that Alex wants to send me. Ba ding. Yeah, I'll have a look in a sec. Come on, go, 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 go. Let's get a pass before we finish. 
Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Did I get the pass? I wanted to get the lap! I think it was good enough. Oh well. Bit of a damaged car. We'll uh, gloss over that. Not too bad. What am I supposed to be looking at, Alex? I'll do this race and then I'll get back to you on that, Alex. I still can't believe Twitch has some double standard bullshit. A woman had both of her tits out. Go to Harry Potter world. Oh, lucky you! I don't like Harry Potter anyway, so I'm not fussed. <laughs> nah, but that that's some double standard bullshit. Like, uh, we're in a weird time on the internet, so society won't let women get their tits out, right? Which is basically 95% of women saying that women can't get their tits out, so... Yeah, women will always say, like, oh, it's sexist. Or... No. <laughs> Women's problem. But then also, on these platforms, if a guy, like... You know, gets nude in any way whatsoever. Accidental or not, it's a permanent ban. But a woman can sit there, have her tits out, and not even get banned. Like, that's some double standards. Oh. I'm in the speed bumps. How many theory tests have you done now, Alex? I cry when angels deserve to die. Your fifth try. God, man. Have you actually been revising? What is it you're failing on? Because it can't be... The only thing that it could possibly be is maybe the hazard perception. Because the multiple choice is fucking easy. It's, a, it's, a, it's more common sense. With the uh, multiple choice. For the British theory test. It's literally just like, oh, where? My hazard perception. Yeah. <laughs> Top tip for the hazard perception if you see something, click twice. Click when you see it, and click when it's clearly visible. Because sometimes, when you see it and notice it, it's too early. I clicked too early for a lot of my questions uh, and failed mine. So if you do that second click, that gives you a chance to rescue a couple of points, just in case you've done it too early. Honestly, like, it, it's so stupid that you can actually click earlier than what is possible because and in how they program the test, they think, oh yeah, that doesn't look like people will notice it, which is not true. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.